poverty. I'm Lisa Oligas and you're watching Newsmakers. In this edition, we look at a problem that exists for women and solutions suggested by students taking part in the MOSO CAPS program. Two pairs of students recognized an area of need for women when it comes to the purchase of hygiene products to deal with menstrual cycles. In fact, in 21 states, period products like tampons are taxed as luxury items. According to the Alliance for Period Supplies, those taxes still exist in Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, among others. Some think it is time to change the cycle. We begin our conversation with two students who may change the cycle. They're Moso Caps Pitch. Meet Jolie Powell, a senior at College Heights High School, and Ashlyn Santini, a junior at Joplin High School, who are part of the Human Services Strand of Moso Caps. With them is Dr. Suzanne Hall, director of the Moso Caps program. Thank you all for being here and making time to talk about this issue. Yes, thank you so much. This is a huge issue um, within women in our area, and so we just wanted to do what we could to help. So what opened your eyes to this, and what made you pick this, this topic? Um, do you want to go ahead? <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we had done this, um, this uh, just going through different um, things that needed attention to it in different aspects of the world and environment women's health and stuff like that and then uh, we just narrowed it down to menstrual products and uh, me and Jolie just connected on that and we were like let's do this together and change the cycle. Why and how did you pick that name because it's, it's a nice name. Mm -hmm. So um, we were just trying to think of a name specifically that doesn't have maybe a taboo com connotation to it mm -hmm. and something that the um, anybody could really get behind because sometimes there's um, sometimes some negative connotation to specific words surrounding like menstrual menstrual uh, cycle and menstrual mm -hmm. products and it just it kind of um, like latched on it was kind of like a play on words and it just it just made sense without um, kind of bringing some taboo right so Jolie and Ashlyn tell me you're in high school do you feel like students your age struggle with the cost of these products I do I um, just seeing these prices go up, um, they have actually significantly when in the time period that I have been in high school. Um, from the start of 2020, there's actually been a shortage on menstrual products, which has caused a significant price increase. And this has never been able to go down. And so through um, my entire experience of high school, we've had this up in prices. And it's also just the lack of availability in our facilities. We have, you know, that classic machine where you put a quarter in, but half mm -hmm. the time those aren't stocked or nobody has a quarter. So it's not even just the, the uh, increase of prices, it's the lack of those products in our facilities. Yeah, most people don't use coins or, or <laughs> dollars anymore. So Dr. Hall, let's talk a little bit. What directive do you give to students when they pick their pitch projects and, and when they choose something like this? Yeah, so we have um, in the fall during CAPS prep, um, it's the five weeks prior to the students starting their industry partner placements, we um, had Ricky Smith with Freeman Healthcare Systems. She came and she did um, a two and a half hour segment with our students really taking a deeper dive into where their passions lie. And so they had all of these, and Ashlyn sort of alluded to this, they had all these, she had all these um, uh, papers around the room, like environment, um, healthcare, um, what, you know, you name it, it was probably on the wall, you know, these different categories. And then the students had to identify, you know, they had to put like little sticky notes of where their passions lie. And then they narrowed it down eventually and that's where they came up with this. So once they identify what they want their capstone project to be, then they start in and they, it's truly up to them. We take them through some, um, some uh, pr uh, project management mm -hmm. um, scenarios and then they, they have to start working to identify like who are their contacts going to be, who are they going to target, you know, what, what has to be done and what items do they need to collect in order to bring their uh, project to fruition. So girls tell me, how did the MoSoCast program prepare you to do this project? Um, I think definitely mm -hmm. just with um, all of the uh, meetings that we had and the different guest speakers that came and talked about uh, all of the different things and having those activities um, and then just always having the advisors there to help us with whatever we needed and kind of lead us in the right direction and always having um, contacts for us to mm -hmm. contact to mm -hmm. when we needed um, different people to help us um, more specifically 
which changed the cycle. There was always somebody that specified in that kind of information. Right. So I, I was there when you did your pitch project with your board. So talk to us about your board and tell me, because one thing that you made me aware of, which was educational, you talked about the uh, the luxury tax on mm -hmm. these products, sometimes called the tampon tax or the pink tax. How did you learn about this tax and how did you incorporate that in your board? So um, I think it was my junior year. So last year I did a big um, research paper over just like whatever issue I wanted to talk about. And so I actually chose at that moment period poverty and the luxury tax that's mm -hmm. um, surrounded about that, um, that has the specified name, the pink tax. And so just researching it, um, it almost angered me <laughs> that this, this was an issue that um, women had to deal with because, you know, I had no clue that I was paying this extra tax on a product that I, I needed. It was a necessity. And so um, that was kind of what sparked my interest, mm -hmm. but I never really um, understood what I could do about that until the idea of this capstone project um, came up. And then I um, had the ability to actually do something about it. Yeah, so both of you tell us you created a board to share your mm -hmm. findings and your pitch and your solutions. So what did you come up with and what are you doing to try and solve this problem? So through May 20th through the 31st, in honor of Women's Health Month, we are having a menstrual product drive called um, Change the Cycle. Um, we have some physical boxes located in specifically Bearded Lady Coffee Shop, um, a couple of our boutiques, uh, the Vi Boutique and Blue Moon Boutique in Joplin, as well as um, here on Missouri Southern's campus. We will have physical boxes where people can bring menstrual products and then um, scattered all across Joplin, we have a virtual donation, which will just look like a QR code with basically all this information of, um, to educate people in the Joplin community about um, Change the Cycle mm -hmm. and why it is about, and all of these proceeds will go to Lafayette House and Loving Grace, which are two specific women shelters here in our community. Ashlyn, are there specific products that are most often in need or is it kind of across the board? Um, when it comes to women's products. I, I would say that um, there's definitely specific items that are more so used, um, just depending on um, the, age, the age range um, of specific women and um, like what they have been introduced to. So I think definitely tampons are used a lot. Um, and then, of course, when you first are getting your menstrual cycle, um, you are most often first um, shown pads. So mm -hmm. I would say those specifically are two main ones. Yeah. So this was your project. Is this something you think that can be an ongoing effort? Would you like to see it? Yes. Continue? I would love to. And Absolutely. I would, and I would love to see it go farther than just collecting mm -hmm. products. Um, to give to people. I would love to see, you know, we've addressed that this luxury tax is an issue. Um, I would love um, maybe for Missouri to see that it is an issue and eliminate that tax because um, one of the issues with the luxury tax is um, menstrual products are one of the products that cannot be bought with food stamps. And so um, if that could be an option, I feel like a lot of relief with period poverty could be done in the state of Missouri. It sounds like great advice. You might have to <laughs> write some letters to those lawmakers, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. absolutely. Well, congratulations on your effort. It's a great project. Thank you for telling us all about it. Thank you. We're going to talk with representatives of Lafayette and Loving Grace about those efforts. Next, we want to thank the girls for sharing their very worthy <laughs> project. We're going to take a break. As I mentioned, when we come back, we hear from the charities on the receiving end of the change of the cycle donation drive. And a little later, two other students will share their efforts to support women in period poverty. First, as we go to break, details of how you can support the change the cycle drive.
efforts of the Moso Cap students change the cycle drive will supply menstrual care products to at least two charities, Lafayette House and Loving Grace. Joining us to discuss the need and the impact of their efforts are Susan Hickam, the Executive Director of Lafayette House, a domestic violence shelter, and Trina Davis, the Director of Loving Grace, a home for young ladies aging out of foster care. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. So, Trina, do you see hygiene projects as an important need for your clients who might be coming to Loving Grace? Most definitely, because a lot of times the young ladies who come to us, sometimes they're coming with nothing but the clothes on their back, and we don't know what time of the month it is for them. So it's very helpful for us to have those things on hand and to have a variety, because everyone has a different preference, and we want to give them some dignity and let them have those things that they, they do need. Mm -hmm. Susan, when women come to your domestic violence shelter. Mm -hmm. Obviously, some of them don't have much of anything because they're Correct. maybe running. Is it an issue for adult women? I mean, hers is teens, essentially, but mm -hmm. adult women as well? Well, absolutely. And also because we serve uh, substance use disorders as well. So we have residential programs there. Um, but people coming to us, those aren't items that they can necessarily bring. And like Trina says, having a variety, not because they, just because they should have that choice, but because our bodies are different. We don't know what may be effective for one person versus another. Yeah. How can not having these hygiene products, you said, you know, dignity. How can ha not having hygiene products be a blow to someone's self-esteem or become a negative in their lives? I mean, can it impact them even having the ability to do activities? I think so, definitely. Um, a lot of times the young ladies we serve, they're coming from just sometimes a family dynamic where the men or the males in the family might nitpick at that time of the month. And if, if they've had an accident, we want to be able to give them some grace and let them know there's no shame in it. It mm -hmm. happens. That's life. Mm -hmm. But um, we just want them to be comfortable in who they are and that it does happen. But let them have some dignity with it. You bet. Mm -hmm. So for both of you, I mean, is the financial aspect part of it. I mean, this has a luxury tax. Who knew? And it seems like a crazy thing that's so necessary for women of all ages for a long time that this could be considered a luxury. It's really a vital need. So does the cost of it, do you hear that from your clients? Well, absolutely. And if they're looking at those differences in needs, so, you know, the, the preferences in style, the, you know, all of those things impact that because if they are needing pads or they're needing tampons, you have a change in um, just in value there as well. So mm -hmm. cost increase um, and just knowing how our bodies function and knowing that those needs have to be addressed for Trina to, to serve such a population that that's still something they're getting used to and can be embarrassing and yes. until they can really understand that aspect of their life and like you say it goes on for a very long time well you have women who may bring their children there too mm -hmm. and and their parents do they ever have to sometimes make that choice are they thinking well i've got to buy this for my child i'll buy the least expensive thing yes when it comes to hygiene products yes and a lot of times so people especially in domestic violence who are fleeing this is their first time to look at a budget mm and to really have to consider that factor in budgeting for their monthly expenses overall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about, I mean, there is embarrassment. There shouldn't be shame around no, it. There but there's been surveys done saying, you know, people don't talk about menstrual cycles. It's, you know, seems to be taboo. They don't teach boys and girls the same things. And it can be a private thing, but girls might talk about it with each other. Mm -hmm. Is there, though, a stigma for the stigma at maybe high school or even in your environment where there's girls of the same age? I mean, are they embarrassed by it? And it no, I mean, the, the girls that we have had recently, they talk about it very openly. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, they're, they don't express much of a stigma, but I know it's out there. But mm -hmm. it's also different what they talk about in the house versus what goes on when they're outside the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are any still in, in school? when they're at your house? Mm -hmm. We have a few, yes. So, I mean, is the high school environment difficult for them when it comes to topics like this? Um, I, they haven't really expressed that to me, but that doesn't mean they haven't talked about it with the case manager or the program director. You bet. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and there have been surveys that say, you know, the high school environment is different, that people don't want to talk about it, and mm -hmm. they wish they were free at high schools. Um, how does having the MOSO CAPS 
girls who are doing these projects and, and preparing to give you some, how does that help you to have donations of these supplies? Is it something that isn't donated very often? It's not always donated very often because it's just not something that people really consider and really think about as mm -hmm. a need. And so for them to really um, focus on this and address this need, I think is wonderful and shows such maturity and it shows such responsibility for themselves and for others um, that it's a true help to us. Do you ever see these donated, Trina, or is it an odd, Occasionally, an it's more when we ask for them, mm -hmm. because occasionally we will ask, but it usually we ask when we realize we've run low and the girls might be asking for them. Yeah. How, are, how important are donations for both of your charities? That's, <laughs> you know, that is the life cycle of, you know, to have donations and to really look at what the impact is to say that, that is a, a donor. So oftentimes we think of that donor aspect as the financial aspect, mm -hmm. but this truly impacts just not just our organization, but the clients and, and their needs. And so what a wonderful direct impact this has. Trina, your response to that same thing? I mean, same thing. Um, if we're if we're putting money towards something like this, it might take away from something else. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. just helps with our overall funding when we get donations of any kind. I was gonna say, if you don't get donations of these things, do you then help buy them for the people, mm -hmm. your yes. clients? Yes. And can it be an expense? Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, because we are thinking about, we're treating the whole person. Mm -hmm. And so you really are having to think about all the things that, you know, when you walk, when you go home at night, what are the things that impact my life? Sorry, I hit my microphone, but uh, what are the things that impact my life? And how, what does that look like for a client who doesn't have as much control? For sure. And I mean, from the, from the living life, like you say, you want this, the whole person. I mean, if, if they only have access to pads, going swimming in a pool, I mean, there would be limitations. And mm -hmm. do you see that as something you don't want to have be another obstacle for your clients? Absolutely. I want them to have as much of a normal life as they can possibly have. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you both for sharing all this information about how this will help your clients. We appreciate it. Thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you. When we come back, we talk with two more MosoCap students about their project to help with menstrual cycle products. They're creating Period Pals. As we go to break, the latest results of a 2023 survey of teens and adult women about period poverty and the stigma surrounding it. The state of the period annual survey indicates nearly a quarter of teens struggle to afford period products. of young women in the MOSO CAPS program, Health Sciences Strand, also recognize the need for a solution to period poverty. Joining us to share their pitch project are Isabella Maines, a junior from Webb City High School, and Brenna Richards, a junior at Carl Junction High School. Thank you both for being here. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. Thank you. So talk to us about your project, which you made a pitch board about. So yours is called Period Pals, and I want each of you to share why you believe this was such an important issue to make as your project. Um, so we originally made this because we wanted to put it inside of schools around this area. Around this area of Missouri, people don't really get much information from their mothers or from the schools as well. 
So we thought that putting it inside of schools, having that access to them for the young adults, and um, inside we put brochures on how to use a pad and tampon correctly because a lot of people don't actually know how to use them correctly would be beneficial to our community. Yeah. You personally, have you seen girls struggle with that in schools? Uh, yes, on social media I've heard of people who really just didn't know how to use a tampon properly and a lot of people do struggle just getting access to these things. Yeah. So Brenna, tell us, why did you think this was a good choice for a project? For, like, honestly, everyone in our group, we kind of knew growing up, sometimes it was a struggle to learn about periods and having access to products. And we also really just wanted to normalize menstruation because a lot of people treat it as it's a taboo. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to normalize it, educate about it, and then obviously help those who need help. Um, a lot of the people in the survey that was shown a minute ago talked about that they really would like it talked about more in school. But you say it's really not ever mentioned. No. no. It's kind of a stigma to me. Um, do you think these products should be available in restrooms at school freely? That was one of the things mentioned, that, that people think they should be free. Yes, absolutely. I think that they should be offered in the restrooms. We do sometimes have them in the nurf mm -hmm. nurse's office, but not always. But it's kind of like a one-size thing, and not one-size-fits-all. So that's why we're trying to get the variety of products and items and to give that more access so like a student wouldn't have to walk down to the nurse's office, especially if they're having an emergency. They could just have it right there for them in the bathroom. Yeah. And are students ever in a position where they have to borrow? I mean, is there also that fear of embarrassment? Yes, it's honestly all the time, high school, elementary school, every girl, you can hear it. Hey, do you have something I can borrow? Do you have anything? Because sometimes you just run out and then there's an emergency. And a lot of times, even like if you do borrow something, it's not going to work for you because, you know, obviously there's different flows that you can have with the period. So tell me about your solution and your board and, and what you've included in your project. So uh, our solution was to make this period pack, which does include a tampon, a regular size tampon, a regular size pad, uh, panty liners, a heating pad. There's a little chocolate for fun because, you know, those days are rough. <laughs> Um, and I'm pretty sure that's all that we had in there. There's also sanitary wipes. Sanitary wipes. And so if we could get that implemented in the schools for access in the bathrooms, then that would be our top priority. We also, when we were presenting our board to the community, some people recommended putting them in like a community clinic, uh, contacting the Lafayette House, and putting it in like the Carl Junction Cares community closet. So when you have a project like this, do you then have to think of, how to fund it, how to raise, to gather these products. The other girls are having a donation drive. What is your solution to kind of coming up with these packs and these products? Um, so we originally made four of them as a prototype, and we did pay for it out of our own pocket. But if we can get the support of the community to either um, help, like give, donate money mm -hmm. towards us so that we can make them, or we could give them a list um, of the stuff that we have inside of them, and they could buy it themselves and then donate the supplies to us and we could make the packs and to put them wherever they are, were putting them at. Mm -hmm. So talk to me, what have you learned by making this your project? I mean, were you also aware of that luxury tax that some call the pink tax on and tampon tax? Or was that kind of a, a new thing to learn? Um, that was a new thing to learn about, but I feel like one thing we did learn is really how expensive all of the products are. Because just for four, it cost us over $40. And I mean, that was a lot just coming out of our pockets, but just think four might help four girls, but then there's a lot of other people that still need access to these products. Is cost something that you hear about in your school? I mean, that girls talk about, about or do they even talk about it at all? Not really. I've mm -hmm. never heard anybody talk about cost, but it was just like, hmm, I don't have anything today. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like a, tab a taboo to talk about periods in schools mm -hmm. or just in general. And do you think that should change? Yeah, that's a part of our project is just to spread awareness and make it known that like it's normal. And we even included a chart on our board of the different like colors of period blood to help educate as well. Do you feel like in the school setting, it's an awkward thing? And do you think that even boys need to learn about it too so that they don't necessarily embarrass girls when it comes to having this? Um, honestly, yeah, because sometimes it can be really awkward going up to a teacher and be like, I need to go to the bathroom, and if they ask why, well, it's an emergency. You have to sometimes explain it to guy teachers, because girl mm -hmm. teachers, they'll understand. But a lot of, like, guy teachers, the guys in our classes, 
they're just like, what's going on? You're being over dramatic. You don't mm. like they don't understand. Yeah. So a lot of our things just really educating women who don't know things and the guys that don't know things. Yeah. And I mean, teacher education, it seems like, because then it is, it puts you in an embarrassing situation if you're in school and you have to explain that to a teacher. Yes. So let's talk about, um, what do you hope the end result is of your effort, you know? Um, we're just hoping that more people could get educated, they can get access to these products, and just like normalize menstruation. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Brenna? Honestly, yeah. Obviously what Isabella said, but then also just trying to get more people to think about donating different products, or if they see somebody who needs something, they'll just go and offer. Do you think schools, I mean, you said they should probably be in the bathrooms. Is that something that maybe the PTA or some organization at a school could then be a sponsor for? We did honestly think about that. And we mm -hmm. also had someone who said they had a connection with a school board talk to us and said, you should just bring this up and then we can talk about it. But it's also kind of hard trying to fully implement things into schools because they're like, well, this is an outside source. We don't know how to feel about it. Mm -hmm. And they're, a lot of schools also say, well, we provide things, so why would we need this? So, but it, I mean, it may have to be a budget item. Yes. So when you're doing a project like this, do you have to kind of consider those things as challenges? What did you learn in that process about, oh, this could be an obstacle? It definitely uh, was a lot more challenging than we expected just for the schools because that's what our original thing was. That's why we moved over towards maybe the more community stuff because they're more accepting of our items, but the schools, there's a lot of regulations that you have to go through. What else do you think it would be? A, what was the challenge for you, Brenna? Honestly, just reaching out because mm -hmm. we did implement some of our products into our, the Carl Junction Community Center. But with that, you didn't have to tell anybody. You could just go in and drop it off. So it was kind of also hard to widespread everything, mm -hmm. trying to get the message out there, like this is something we need to talk about. So do you feel like you can get help from the community or you hope the community jumps in to support more? And did you find some help there? Yes. Yes. We had, like when we were presenting our pitch mm -hmm. originally, we had several people like, let me take down your name, your number, your email, and they reached out to places for us. Well, it's great ideas. Thank you both for sharing all the information about your project. Thank you so thank much. You. And thank you for your efforts. And I would encourage you guys to seek a change in the tax status for the products to make them more affordable. That wraps up this edition of Newsmakers. I'm Lisa Oligas. We hope you're inspired by the MosoCaps students to problem solve. Next week, we'll learn about even more MosoCaps projects, including a plan for Rory's Garden, the 100-plus day dog website, Mission Nation Nature's Haven, and Joplin Population Health. Thanks to all our guests, and thank you for watching Newsmakers.